Hey guys, I'm Chris from the Silver Symbol channel, and in today's video, I'm gonna share a really cool project that I just finished up. I upgraded all of the outdoor faucets on my house with a much better solution. Now this is a product I've shown you in the past, it's called Aquar. They not only look cool, they actually function better. But the difference in this video is, I'm gonna be using a model that is ideal for retrofitting existing spigots. Now the reason they even make two different models is this larger rectangular version has a built-in backflow preventer. Now that's something required by code, it has to do with the kind of suction, but if you install one of these in your existing setup, you'll need to make a much larger hole. But these guys were clever. They have another version, this round model, that is perfect if you're gonna be retrofitting older spigots. Now I live in New Hampshire and these are considered frost-free faucets. Now the way all of these work is they keep the mechanism inside the building. That's done by using the correct length model, and that's not just for Aquar, that's for any model faucet, but many people just go to the store and they grab one that they think is correct. And like any plumbing project, you're gonna start by turning the water off. Now I'm gonna begin with this outdoor faucet. I chose this one because this had a defective backflow preventer. And that made it act really weird. Sometimes they turn the water on, nothing would come out. If I kind of tapped it or banged it, the water would just start flowing. And you certainly can repair a backflow preventer. That's not the point of this video. I wanted to get an upgrade. The other cool part about these aquas is they come in different finishes. They've got white, stainless steel, and flat black. Now that's what I'm gonna pick from my house because it's kind of an older design. Now plumbing is gonna vary in different houses, so I can only show you what I've got here. Because this is PEX, I've got this metal bracket. All this thing does is ensure that the pipe doesn't kink. I can easily pop this out, and now I can go ahead and just cut the pipe using a standard pipe cutter. Now at this point, I should be able to just remove the screws holding the spigot in and slide it right out of the wall. Now one tip is longer faucets are always better. The further you get it inside their house, that means it's less likely to freeze. You just wanna make sure that you're not gonna hit anything inside your space. It's also cool that you can get these aquas in different versions for different types of plumbing. Here I ordered the factory PEX-A adapter. This means the faucet will directly connect to my plumbing. You'll want to try to test fit your new faucet to make sure it's going to fit. And this is pretty common, even with this retrofit model, that the hole might not be quite wide enough. Now you have a couple of different ways you can enlarge the hole. The best way is going to be to go out and buy a one and a half inch drill bit. But here's a trick that might work for you without having to buy any additional tools. Grab any type of drill bit that you've got. I'd recommend using a larger one and put your cordless drill on the highest speed setting possible. Insert it into the hole and kind of move it around in a circular fashion. Basically what you're doing is you're trying to eat away just a little bit of that wood. Now this isn't the most elegant solution, but I've used this trick many times in the past and it works fine if you just need to enlarge a hole a little bit. I'd also recommend taking a second to vacuum out that hole. There could be wood debris, things in there that might get in the way of your new faucet going in easily. Now before you screw this thing down, you've got to actually insert the trim plate behind the faucet. The trim plate is angled. That will also allow the faucet to be angled slightly downward. That means that anytime you shut the water off or remove the quick handle, the water will fully drain from the faucet. Now you can use the included stainless steel screws, and I like to begin by using that top middle screw, but I recommend that you pre-drill these things before you put them in, because if you've got clapboard vinyl siding, there is a chance you could split something. So once you've pre-drilled that first hole, put it in partially, and then you can go ahead and make sure everything is level. Now there is a gasket behind that cover, making this thing fully weather tight. But if you wanna use silicone or something else behind that, you can certainly go ahead, but I'm not gonna use it for this particular installation. Once you've got all three screws looking good and you feel like this thing is pretty level, you can go ahead and tighten them all down. Now for those of you who have PEX in your house today, you're gonna to realize how simple this plumbing is to work with. But if you don't, you've got copper, you can watch my other video where I show you how to use shark bites and some other solutions to get one of these installed. Now to connect this to the fixture, I've just gotta use an expansion ring and ultimately an expansion tool. If you haven't used PEX A before, it is different than the crimp system that you use with PEX B. Here I just need to insert the ring onto the end of the pipe and then I can use this expansion tool. This is an electric tool, but they make manual versions of these tools as well. You insert the tool into the end of this, expand both the ring and the pipe at least 10 times. Now you can remove the tool and you've got about 10 seconds to insert it onto the fixture. What's happening right now is it's fully expanded, but it will shrink down in about 30 seconds and give you an instant watertight connection. I'm also gonna skip using that angle adapter. Those are really important if you're in a tight space, but here this bend radius is very comfortable. Now all that's left is turning the water back on and we can check out the faucet to make sure everything is working properly. 
Now, one thing you might be wondering is, how is this faucet working without a backflow preventer? That's required by code pretty much everywhere in the US. But to meet the code requirements, they actually move the backflow preventer into the quick handle itself. Using an Aquar is just like any other faucet, except with some added benefits. You can turn the valve on here. You've got your water working whenever you want. Or you could leave it on all the time. But you can also remove it and you'll see that the flow of water stopped immediately. But in my first video, many people noticed this water coming out and immediately thought this thing had failed. It's actually self-draining the water that's in the section of the pipe so that it won't freeze during the winter. That's normal operation. If you don't want to experience that, you can just go ahead and leave this connected during the summer months and it won't leak any water. You'll just use this valve to control the flow of water. There's even a little cutout here so that the water won't pool up inside. Close it, that dries in a few seconds. Now you've got a cool look and it's ready for the winter. It also allows you to control your water. You've got a spigot outside your house. Anyone could access it. But here you can go ahead and remove that faucet and now you've essentially eliminated that problem completely. Now that very first video I did has over 10 million views and I've got a mix of comments. People who buy these absolutely love them. The looks, how they work, but many people hate these things. Why on earth would you change a design that's been around forever? I don't want to have to buy anything proprietary. But what do you guys think? Is this something you would consider for your own house? Do you like the way it looks? Or do you think it's totally unnecessary? And I hope you liked this video. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you're not already for more videos coming up.